One lamb in the darkness, away from the fold, surrounded by danger, weary and cold. Hope seems so distant, no help is in sight. The Christ to be saved, swallowed up in the night. Unknown to the Lamb, and not far away, the shepherd is searching one gone astray. He longs for the moment to find his lost lamb and carry him back to the fold once again. Even through storms with rain beating down, even when darkness and dangers abound, none of these hinder the love of the shepherd. He'll stop at nothing to rescue one wanderer. There is no valley the shepherd won't cross, no matter the distance or cost. However hopeless, however lost. Like the lost lamb, I was lonely and cold. My sins had all led me away from the fold. Hope seemed so distant, no help was in sight. My cries to be saved, swallowed up in the night. Then off in the distance I heard a sweet sound, the voice of the shepherd, his lamb to be found. He came to my rescue, my sins he forgave. Praise God, Jesus found me, forever I'm saved. He saved me as even through storms, with rain beating down, even when darkness and dangers abound. None of these hinder the love of the shepherd. He'll stop at nothing to rescue one wanderer. There is no valley the shepherd won't cross, no matter the distance or cost. However hopeless, however lost, however hopeless, Storms with rain beating down, even when darkness and dangers abound. None of these hinder the love of the shepherd. He'll stop at nothing to rescue one wanderer. There is no valley the shepherd won't cross, no matter the distance or cost, however hopeless. However lost, however hopeless, however lost, the Savior is seeking, no matter the cost, come now to Jesus. For joining us tonight for Thoughts from the Pastor. We look forward to seeing you this Sunday, May 17th, at our drive-in service. We had a wonderful Mother's Day drive-in service last week, and we're looking forward to what God will do this Sunday at 10 o'clock. Now let's get right into it tonight. Uh, we want to look at the life of Jonah in our series entitled, God Can Advance Us By Making Us Retreat. The story of Jonah, uh, we pick up in the Bible in Jonah 
chapter 1, verse 1, uh, but there's a little bit of background that you need to know about Jonah before we get there. Uh, Jonah was uh, basically a priest, according to Bible scholars. He was a priest in the temple, and uh, as he was doing his priestly duties, he would have known a lot about the Psalms and other things, uh, and he was a, a very religious, very uh, godly man, and so uh, we believe that he was working for the Lord there in that situation, and God called him to be what we would call a missionary. And God called him to go and preach uh, the message of the Lord to a city called Nineveh. And through chapter 1, we find, and you know the story uh, of, of Nineveh's life, and, or of Jonah's life, and how that he was called to go to Nineveh. He didn't want to, and he ran from the presence of the Lord. Uh, he was going to go in the exact opposite direction, so he went down to a port uh, and there, and basically uh, at Joppa picked up a ticket to get on a ship and to go the opposite direction of what God had called him to do. And you know the story as he gets on the ship, uh, they begin to set sail uh, for Tarshish and God sends a great storm uh, out to, in the middle of the ocean where they're at and uh, it seems that Jonah is not worried about it. He's asleep uh, in there on the ship and all the rest of the sailors are running around frantically uh, trying to figure out what's going on and they're pitching things off of the side and praying and clam uh, just clamoring to their God and, and here, here the ship captain comes down to, to Jonah where he's at and says, hey, what are you doing? You're in here sleeping. What's going on? And they kind of grabbed Jonah up out of there and uh, began to question him and began to uh, ask him where he's from and, and what God he serves. And, and Jonah just kind of gives the whole thing up and tells him that uh, he is running from the one true God, Jehovah, and that God has sent this storm and the only way they're going to be able to calm the storm is to throw him overboard. Well, sailors are not really uh, that uh, uh, excited about throwing people over and overboard out into the ocean. And so they kind of uh, balked at that a little bit and they uh, began to cry, uh, to cry out to Jehovah God and say, hey, we don't want to have this guy's blood on our hands. We don't want to be guilty of killing this guy. Uh, so uh, they did decide to go ahead and throw him overboard. And as they throw him into the ocean, we pick up our story in Jonah chapter 1, verse 17. So join me there. Jonah chapter 1 in the Bible. Jonah chapter 1 and verse 17. The Bible says, Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Now we're talking about the fact that God can advance us uh, sometimes by making us retreat into isolation. And uh, Jonah's isolation is very unique. Uh, it's not nearly as long when we talked about Moses and other uh, people in the Bible in the Old Testament as we have went through this series. But uh, Moses was in the wilderness for 40 years, which is an extremely a long amount of time. But he's basically living his life uh, like most people would have. He had a family. Uh, he's taking care of sheep. Uh, Jonah's isolation is very brief. But it is super intense. Uh, he has found himself swallowed by a great fish, uh, probably some type of whale, and he is in the belly of this great fish, uh, in there with all of the stomach acid and all the things that a, a, a great fish would be swallowing. Uh, we don't know how much room there was in there. Uh, you know, I remember when I was a little kid, I always thought it would be cool to go in there in the laundromat and get in the washer uh, and just go round and round like they did in the cartoons. And thank God you can't. Turn that on uh, from the inside. If I could have been able to, I might have went round and round in there in the dishwasher or in the uh, washer, and that would not have been good. But that's the way, basically, where Jonah's at right now. He finds himself in this uh, whale's belly, and he's being tossed and turned, and uh, the the ocean, the the sickness, and all the things. I don't want to get into all of it, but it's just a, a tremendously intense isolation that God has put him in. And we see in chapter two, verse one, that Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly and said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me out of the belly of hell, cried I, and thou heardest my voice. Now there you get the idea of what Jonah thinks about his time of isolation. Verse 3, For thou hast cast me into the deep in the midst of the seas, and the floods compassed me about. All thy billows and thy waves passed over me. So you can see the turmoil that's in the life of Jonah at this point. Now verse 4 is very uh, uh, interesting, and we need to look at, take a look at it uh, for our study tonight. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again toward the holy temple. 
So we find out that here in verse 4, as Jonah's recalling his prayer inside the fish, that basically Jonah refocuses himself in his moment of crisis, in his moment of isolation. He refocuses himself and his uh, life on God. He begins to think back about the temple and about what God had told him to do and, and maybe even went back in his mind to the days that he was working as a priest in the temple and the fact that that day that God called him to go to Nineveh and all these things are rolling back through his mind because um, he's got plenty of time to think. And so, verse 5 says, The water compassed me about, even to the soul. The depths closed me around about, and the weeds were wrapped about my head. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. Notice verse 7. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came in unto thee into thine holy temple. So we notice in verse 7 that uh, a lot of times in our life when everything is taken away and all of our schedules and our, our uh, uh, different events and entertainment and things that uh, were a regular part of our life, when all that's uh, stripped away, that God is able to become so much clearer to us and we begin to focus in on God. And that's what Jonah did here in verse 7. Notice verse 8. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. But verse 9 says, But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. You know what Jonah is saying here in verse 9? Is, Okay, Lord, I will do what you've said. Uh, for me to do. I will do what you wanted me to do originally. I will go to Nineveh. If you will release me from this time of isolation, if you'll get me out of this uh, fish's belly, I will go no matter what it takes and I will preach uh, the word of God to the city of Nineveh. So Jonah in verse 9 surrenders his heart and his life to the obedience of what God wanted him to do in that time of isolation. Verse 10 says, The Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. And so so at once God saw the repentance there and the change of heart in Jonah's life, he got him out of the isolation, he got him out of the fish's belly, and he sent him on, verse 1 says, verse of chapter 3, And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So God reminds him, Now this is your job, Jonah, to go to Nineveh and preach the word that I've given to you. And so Jonah did what God told him to do. Now the Bible tells us that Nineveh was a great city. And it would take you about three days to walk around the outside walls of the city. It was so big. It was basically like what a whole country uh, size would have been back in those days. Uh, and so Jonah makes his journey into the city. And we believe that he probably walked through the whole middle of the city. And he's just preaching and proclaiming that God's judgment is going to come in 40 days. And uh, preaching wasn't uh, ex extraordinary. He wasn't uh, the greatest speaker in the world. And he didn't get up and uh, preach some eloquent message. He just told them what God had told him to tell him. And uh, basically everyone got so uh, afraid of the judgment of God that they all began to repent. They began to put on sackcloth and ashes. They began to fast. Uh, they even uh, called a fast for the animals and put the animals on with sackcloth uh, and uh, uh, uncomfortable uh, things that they did there. If you, as you can see in chapter 3 and 4. And basically the whole entire city, the king included, repented and they uh, repented of their sins and they were basically saved. They came to Rome to God's way of thinking about what their uh, sin was and the whole entire city was saved because of Jonah's preaching. Uh, and what a tremendous thing that this is uh, in the life of Jonah and in the life of the city of, J of Nineveh. Now, I want you to understand that there, this brings up a lot of questions for me, uh, and I have a lot of questions about the time of our isolation and the coronavirus and what's going on in America and in the world. A couple questions that I've thought of is, will God remove the coronavirus from America? And if He does, how long will it take? Will He restore our economy to its past glory? Is He judging America for moving away from God? Are there 40 days in America left to repent, like in Nineveh's case? You know, these are questions that we don't have the answers to. But I do know that we, like Jonah, we need to repent of our lack of concern for the lost around us. In this time of isolation and retreat, 
God can advance us if we will repent of our attitude and our heart and our lack of compassion for those around us that do not know the Lord as their personal Savior. If we can repent of that and determine in our time of isolation that when we are able and however we are able, we are going to become the witness that God wants us to be. I know that if we can determine that in our heart and repent of what we have not done and what we have and the way that we have not received and 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 done the call that God has put on our life to witness and to be a witness, if we can repent of that in this time of isolation, I know that God can certainly advance us not only personally but in our church. God could advance Grace and Bible Baptist Church if we would all decide and determine in our hearts that we're going to obey the call of the Lord to preach the gospel to those that do not know the Lord as their personal Savior. All of those around us, uh, there are uh, opportunities to email, there are opportunities to text, to call, to invite to our Facebook uh, uh, channel and to our YouTube channel and to the things that we're uh, producing uh, to see on TV and the services and the preaching of the gospel. Those things can be uh, used as tools to invite your neighbors and your fam family and friends to those services. So I just want us to determine in this time of isolation that we're going to respond to the call that God has put on our life to preach the gospel to the lost. And if we'll do that, God can certainly advance us in this moment of retreat. I want to invite you back next week, uh, next Wednesday night, to Thoughts from the Pastor.